Deadly Demons, Sucky Spider Heroes, Warrior Women of the Wastelands, and One Really Good Dog are just a few of the film subjects that have flopped so far in 2024. But did they all deserve it? Arthur the King, starring Mark Wahlberg and Simu Liu, is based on Michael Lindnord's 2016 memoir, Arthur, the Dog Who Crossed the Jungle to Find a Home. In the film, adventure racer Michael Light embarks on a 435-mile journey with a street dog named Arthur. The film did well with critics, earning a 70% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, with reviews praising the narrative and Wahlberg's acting. Unfortunately, critical acclaim doesn't always earn a ton of money. The film cost around $19 million to make but only brought in about $40.8 million, just a little above its break-even point. Some estimates place the box office total at even less. But either way, movie math suggests it likely lost money. Regardless, Arthur the King is worth watching, but be prepared to shed a tear or two as a film masterfully tugs at the heartstrings. The Omen franchise kicked off in 1976 with The Omen, which was followed by three sequels. The franchise pretty much ended with Omen 4, The Awakening, in 1991, though it was followed by a television series and a 2006 remake. The first Omen is the latest addition to the franchise, but this time it's a prequel which fills in the backstory, all the way back to the satanic conspiracy and the birth of Damien, the Antichrist. Both fans and critics agreed it was an excellent addition to the series, scoring an 81% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but audiences stayed away from theaters, possibly since the franchise had been all but dead by 2024. The first Omen earned only $53.8 million of a production budget of $30 million, not hitting its break-even point. It's surprising that such a well-made movie failed at the box office, but thanks to streaming services, it found a new life. The first Omen landed in the top 10 titles across numerous streaming platforms upon its debut. Based on true events that occurred during a cold wave that hit North America in 1994, Ordinary Angel stars Hilary Swank as Sharon, a hairdresser who brings an entire community together to help a widowed father save his daughter's life. It's definitely a feel-good movie and was a huge success with critics and moviegoers, earning an 84% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, as well as a remarkably high audience score of 99%. Still, that didn't translate into financial success. The film reportedly cost $13 million to produce, but only made made $20.5 million at the box office, not reaching its break-even point. One of the main reasons a film likely flopped was that it was perceived and marketed as a faith-based movie. Make certain that you're there with your Bible study group, with your church, on opening weekend. That's a genre that has often underperformed with the mainstream audience, only sometimes making up the difference in rental or streaming markets. Still, audiences seem to think it's worth a watch. The vampire movie has been around so long, there's very little room left for true originality in the genre. That's not true of Abigail, which actually does something unique with the concept. The film breaks standard vampire rules by centering its narrative on a little girl, Abigail, played by Alicia Weir, who's actually a bloodsucker, but inexplicably has a pulse. The story revolves around a group of kidnappers who take Abigail hostage in her home, though they have no idea what they've gotten themselves into. One by one, Abigail picks them off, and it's a fun ride for the audience. The film did well with critics, nabbing an 83% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. When it came time to count the box office receipts, Abigail underperformed. The film cost $28 million to produce, but only took in $42.4 million at the global box office, only hitting about 75% of its break-even point. It's unclear why the film failed, but it could have been due to a poor marketing campaign or a general disinterest in an oversaturated genre. All right, let's go kill us a f***ing vampire. Ryan Gosling had an excellent 2023, thanks to playing Ken and Barbie, and it looked like he was up for another big hit in 2024 with The Fall Guy, an unlikely adaptation of a 1980s TV series. The film follows Gosling's stunt performer, Colt Seavers, who comes out of semi-retirement to work on his ex-girlfriend's directorial debut, while he's simultaneously drawn into a deadly conspiracy. The Fall Guy had it all, action, adventure, romance, and plenty of laughs, so it seems like a surefire hit. Rotten Tomatoes had it sitting at an 80 2% fresh rating, so it definitely had what it took to impress critics. But despite everything the movie had going for it, it bombed at the box office. The film cost $125 million to produce, and it ended its theatrical run with only $180 million, well below its break-even point. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough nostalgia for the 113-episode ABC show, so a built-in fanbase wasn't there to drive viewers to theaters, which may explain why it flopped. 
Sony's live-action Spider-Man adjacent film franchise has been a bit spotty, with Morbius and Venom doing particularly poorly with critics. Despite these missteps, Sony carried on and released Madam Web in 2024, resulting in the biggest box office bomb in the entire Spider-Man extended franchise. Even Morbius performs better at the global box office. Make us understand. I wish I knew. Madam Web features an all-star cast, including Dakota Johnson, Sidney Sweeney, Telesto Connor, and Isabella Merced. The story focuses on Johnson's Cassandra Webb and her newfound ability to predict the future, and the core cast of characters fight against the murderous Ezekiel Sims. The film was a bust, costing $80 million to produce, with only $100 million returned at the box office, earning just about half of what it needed to break even. A terrible script, wooden acting, horrendous word of mouth, and the fact that it bore almost no resistance resemblance of the comics that inspired it all added up to one box office bomb. Madam Web was also a critical failure, earning only an 11% rotten rating on Rotten Tomatoes. The Watchers is a directorial debut of Ashana Knight Shyamalan, the daughter of producer and director M. Night Shyamalan. The movie stars Dakota Fanning as Mina, who finds herself trapped in a deep forest in Ireland. She finds shelter but becomes trapped with some strangers inside, as dangerous creatures congregate outside every night. While some financial failures do well with critics, The Watchers wasn't one of them. The film managed to score only a 32% rotten rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Bad reviews often keep people away from theaters, and it appears that may have happened with this film, which some critics panned for its dull story and overuse of exposition. Others compared Shyamalan's directing style to her father's, even going so far as to call out the family for nepotism. The Watchers wasn't exceptionally expensive, costing 30 million bucks to produce. Unfortunately, the movie's box office take barely moved beyond that amount, earning only $32.9 million and putting The Watchers at only about half of what it needed to earn to edge into the black. The Mad Max franchise was seemingly dead until director George Miller revived it with 2015's Mad Max Fury Road. That film wasn't a blockbuster, but it earned just enough at the box office as well as critical raves and six Oscar wins to get Miller the green light for 2024's Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. The prequel details the early life and exploits of its titular hero, who was introduced in Fury Road and played by Charlize Theron. Furiosa instead featured Anya Taylor-Joy in the starring role, and the film brought all the action, explosions, chase scenes, and Mayhem fans have come to expect from the franchise. It also wasn't cheap, costing around $168 million to shoot. Ultimately, after making $172.7 million, Furiosa took in just about half of its needed gross. The film did exceptionally well with critics, garnering a 90% fresh rating from Rotten Tomatoes, so its financial failure is hard to explain. It flat out bombed at the box office, possibly due to the recasting of the lead, the often poor performance of prequels, or the near decade that passed between the release of Fury Road and Furiosa. It's unfortunate, as Furiosa is an excellent film, which would have done far better if its cost was reduced. Horror comedies often do pretty well. Merging the two very different genres often leads to success. Of course, that's not always the case, and Lisa Frankenstein is an unfortunate example of a failed horror comedy. The film is about a teenage girl, Lisa, played by Catherine Newton, who crushes hard on a corpse. She brings him back to life, and they embark on a journey of love and murder in an ongoing quest to replace his decaying body parts. Lisa Frankenstein is one of those films that split between critics and audiences. Critics gave it a 52% rotten rating on Rotten Tomatoes, while audiences loved it, giving it an 81% audience score. Well, thanks, I guess. <laughs> That's not too uncommon for movies that lean heavily into humor over realism. But despite audience favorability, the film didn't do well at the box office. It cost only $13 million to produce, but earned just under $10 million at the global box office. This put the film's earnings at only 38% of its break-even point. It likely failed due to poor marketing, a release during Super Bowl weekend, and its short theatrical run. Argyle is a spy comedy starring Bryce Dallas Howard as Ellie Conway, a reclusive novelist about to complete her fifth book about super spy Aubrey Argyle, played by Henry Cavill. Before she can finish, she falls into an espionage conspiracy where her writing appears to be based on real life, pushing her beyond her limits to learn the truth of her place in the world. Argyle has an excellent cast that includes greats like Sam Rockwell and Samuel L. Jackson. It also wasn't cheap at $200 million to produce, but it only made $96 million at the global box office. 
loss, putting its earnings at only a quarter of its break-even point. It also did poorly with critics, earning a 33% rotten rating on Rotten Tomatoes, although its audience score sits at 72%. There are several reasons why Argyle bombed at the box office beyond its incredibly high price tag. The film had a confusing marketing campaign that made it seem as if Cavill was in it more than he was, and the film's narrative goes off the rails in the third act, making it one of the cheesiest action comedies produced in the 21st century. Henry Cavill's 2024 hasn't shaped up to be his best year. Shortly after Argyle bombed, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare failed to achieve its financial goals as well. But that's despite the film being a masterclass in spy action comedies that hit every mark. The film is a fictionalized telling of a real-life story about a band of off-the-book covert operatives who take out a Nazi submarine depot during World War II. Critics gave the film a 69% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, while audiences enjoyed it even more, giving it a 93% audience score. Yes. Sir, good news and bad news. Yes, yes, get to it. The film cost an estimated $60 million to produce, which wasn't much considering the sets, cast, and visual effects used in the movie. But none of that matters if the tickets aren't sold, and the film ended its theatrical run with only $27.5 million, likely failing due to a limited release and stiff competition from Godzilla Kong during its opening weekend. Director Ethan Cohen co-wrote and helmed Drive Away Dolls, the first film he's done without his brother Joel. That directing duo produced numerous mid-sized hits for decades, and Ethan's first solo effort continued their streak with critics, if not with audiences. Drive Away Dolls is a road trip crime comedy about two friends, played by Margaret Qualley and Geraldine Wiz Vanathan, who become involved in a criminal conspiracy on their trip to Tallahassee. The movie did well with critics, landing a 63% fresh rating from Rotten Tomatoes, but audiences did disagreed, giving the film a 35% audience score. The film's budget is estimated to be around $20 million, the amount meant Drive Away Dolls needed to blow up the competition at the box office. The film took in only $7.9 million, putting its earnings at less than 20% of its break-even point. There are probably many reasons why the movie was a box office disappointment, but the primary one was its marketing campaign. The 2023 SAG-AFTRA strike also delayed its release, messing up its rollout and resulting in too few people even knowing about it.